getting a few more things checked off my list. I got the cotter pins put in the castle nuts on the elevator cables. That's where they attach to the torque tube. And I went ahead and pulled the firewall off here. I had to uh, put some, get some buckets and and uh, take the uh, rotisserie off the my airframe rotisserie mount off and uh, pull the firewall off. And the reason I pulled it off is so I could put these fiber washers on. These washers go here between the firewall and the uh, airframe mount engine mount pads. Oh, there's a uh, four of them that go on inside the firewall and then on the book there's three of them that go on outside the firewall between the engine engine mount and the firewall but I got I'm gonna put four of them on because the uh, fourth one that doesn't have one in the book there's a, a bracket that mounts on there underneath the engine mount uh, that uh, is for keeping the engine from swinging too far out. Uh, it's kind of a stop for the engine when you swing the engine out to work on the back of the engine. So I don't have that on this airframe. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and put one of these fiber washers on there. Now this is the um, firewall pad and I cut out around where those mounts are on there. The, they, they'd been on there for a while with that pad on there and they squeezed in pretty tight but they still wouldn't let the mount fit up tight. They're still going to add a little bit of dimension between uh, the engine mount pad and the airframe mount pad and the firewall. So I cut those holes out a little bit bigger and then I cut this hole out down here where the heater mounts up to it um, so that's not going to be squished in there so the heater is going to mount directly to the firewall and, and it won't compress this in. Now I was Wiping this firewall down, I was cleaning it up, took some lacquer thinner and washed it down and uh, cleaned all that ink off of there. And as I was looking at it, I got to wondering, well, where the hell did all these dimples and dents come in? How'd they get there for the on this firewall? It's a brand new firewall that shouldn't have any, and I've been careful with it. I got to looking around here, and I don't know whether you'd be able to see them or not, but there's dimples. And scratch all around that, that, but it's not scratches, it's just places where there's dimples. Well, you get to looking at it, and this is where the engine or the cabin heater mounts to, and these are the holes. Here's the trim piece that goes on the inside here for the for the cabin heater, and so those ho our holes are located in there for the cabin heater mount. And they must have different styles of cabin heaters on here because there's holes punched in different places. You've got this takes the old style cabin heater takes uh, three holes. You've got one in the center on the bottom and two up here. And then this one also has four holes out here in a square pattern. So anyway, those holes are located on there. I thought that was that was kind of like finding the location for the holes for these uh, uh, cowling mounts. I've also got grommets for these holes where the, they're punched out for the engine controls and stuff. There's a couple small small holes there I've got grommets for. And this is where the wiring for the engine goes and the engine controls the carburetor heat, um, cabin heat, mixture, throttle, so on. We had a little mini disaster in here yesterday. It came in to uh, start work on the airplane. And they had water all over on the floor here in the basement. The drain for the washing machine, the outlet for it, it froze up and it backed up into the basement. Fortunately, it was, didn't flood the whole thing. It was mostly over in that far right-hand corner there. There was quite a bit of water there. We had to move all that stuff out of there. A whole bunch of uh, wood for my wife's projects over there in the corner and stuff. and All the tools and whatnot moved everything out of there over here into the main part of the basement and then uh, cleaned that all up got it dried out I've got everything back in place now and straightened up I've got the fiber washers here and I've sprayed a little bit of contact cement on these as well as on the pads there I'm going to stick these on those pads with the contact cement so I put the firewall on uh, I don't have to try to fit them in between the 
the bolt holes here where they want to put the bolts through and stuff and they'll stay on. So we got to pull these bolts out and everything when we take that airframe off of the rotisserie again when we go take it down to uh, mount the engine mount up to it and I put the firewall back on. I went ahead and used some contact cement to uh, and put on these uh, mount pads on the fuselage and on the uh, fiber washers that went on there and then stuck them on and that worked out really nice um, that held them on so you don't have to screw with them while trying to get these bolts through there and it's going to hold them in place. Now before they were glued onto the back of the firewall which makes them a pain in the butt to get off and these pads where they mount to on the airframe are smaller diameter than the washers so it should make it easier to get off. Uh, the firewalls held on here with these basically with these three uh, screws that are welded onto the uh, engine framework here, the fr firewall framework that kind of holds them on. And I think they're just number eight screws and I've got those on with, uh, I think these are AN363 lock washers. They're steel lock washers. Uh, you can't really use fiber lock washers uh, in the engine compartment as uh, it gets hot and the fibers melt and then they lose their locking component. Uh, well, anyway, those are on there with a big, f uh, good sized uh, fender style washer behind them. And then I've got the mounting standoffs that I made for my rotisserie I put on. I've got the grommets put in the holes here except for where the main battery cable comes out. Now the other airframe had kind of a, a te Teflon or, or UHMW or something like that uh, piece to go on that and I'm, I'm going to use that on there. Um, and, uh, and I don't have grommets on here. Uh, this is where the cabin heat goes through and then this is where the uh, gas collator goes. I didn't put the rotisserie back on there yet as it's easier to get in here. The next step that I'm going to do is to put that um, cabin heat box on and the gas collator on and it's just going to be easier to get in there to do those with it up like that without that uh, rotisserie in the way. Now this is the cabin heat box. It just bolts onto the firewall like that. You got a cable that comes down here to a little flapper valve in there that opens to close it. The cable goes up into the cabin and control it. It takes a uh, piece of two inch uh, scat tube, flexible tubing, connects here and then goes up to the to the uh, shroud around the muffler and that's where it gets the heat to go in there. And I say that just mounts up to the firewall. Uh, this piece is the trim piece that goes on inside the cabin. Kind of hold it on there. And one of the things that happens with these cabin heaters is they fit right down there uh, in that uh, firewall and the heat comes out right on the pilot's feet and uh, if you have this valve on there if you have that open part way or whatever that heat's going to come out and it diverted right onto one shoe or the other one and uh, it gets damn hot that your feet just get hot sometimes they can smell the rubber smell off of the tennis shoes or rubber boots when you're flying and of course if the guy in the back seat is cold and you turn it on and the guy in the front seat just gets hot but um, this is a little modification that I made to it it's an F Atley Dodge uh, modification and this fits on the cabin side of the firewall and it'll actually go like this and what it is it's an air box and it diverts the air when you have the, the cabin heater box open this diverts the air up through some ducts in, uh, onto the windshield for a windshield defroster it's probably one of the best modifications you can make to a super cub the uh, vortex generators on the wings and the tail are uh, probably number one and this is probably number two but if you live in a country where it gets damp uh, I can take this, of course we're on floats and down on the water and on a warm sunny day it doesn't make too much difference but on a cool wet day 
the airplane is damp inside and after you get done pre-flighting and fueling and everything you're damp and you get two bodies in there that are damp and and the windows fog up and it's foggy outside and rainy outside and taxiing around and it's it's really hard to see well this diverts enough air onto the windshield just taxiing around to kind of defog it enough so that it makes it safe to taxi on but one of the things that this does then too is it sticks out far enough off the firewall that it gets that heat out past your feet when you're flying so it's not coming right out on your shoes uh, this little plate right here if I've got it set so that this little div um, diverter goes right around that uh, intake on that um, heat box there and I had to trim these ears off a little bit here to get it to fit down in there this little uh, pressed out portion I had to trim it out a little bit to fit around these ears now, the way this thing is, was set on there uh, and of course it's just a retrofit to the airframe so um, you got these ears sticking out and they just stick them on there drill a hole through there and put a rivet through the firewall I'm gonna change that a little bit I'm gonna um, I think I'm gonna rivet those ears right to this little plate and I'm going to put nut plates on this plate and uh, well, I'm going to do that and I'm going to sandblast this down and I, I cleaned this up and painted it with high temp powder coat this is doesn't look too bad and it probably doesn't need it um, I have to think about it and see whether I'm going to do that or not I got this uh, silicone this is some baffling, baffling material I bought years ago and it was the wrong stuff it was not what I wanted but I was going to make a gasket to go between the firewall and the heat box here um, to kind of seal that up but I think this material is a little thicker than I want so I'm going to go see what I can do as far as getting some material a little thinner to seal those up and help keep the air going in through the heat box and uh, and not heat up the firewall right there I got nut plates put on this uh, little plate here uh, put a regular nut plate they're number sixes and I put in a regular one here on the bottom but because the ears on a regular one would interfere with where these straps go um, on this uh, defroster uh, I put single leg ear uh, nut plates on the on the top two screws now to line those up because these holes were already drilled and they're kind of big oversized um, and uh, the, the ones on this uh, heat carburetor heat or a cabin heat valve um, they're different sizes I've got a great big one down here on the bottom and these other two are not and they don't line up quite as well with this as they as they could I put this sandwich this together and uh, put screws through the holes so they line up and screwed the nut plates on and then back drilled through the nut plates to, to locate them. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this together and I'll drill this out for a couple rivets to go in there. I went to town and I got a silicone baking sheet, cookie baking sheet. and. I cut out a couple gaskets out of it. I'll put one gasket um, to this one here on the uh, cabin air box, cabin heat box. I'll put one gasket on it. That'll go against the firewall. I'll put this one on here and it'll be sandwiched. That way that'll keep the air from leaking out around the joints on that. And I'll take some RTV and, and dope up this when I put it together so it doesn't leak out around that and that should keep the the cat the firewall from getting maybe keep it from getting too hot but it'll keep any air from leaking around there so it's all powder coated there now cleaned up real nice still says F Atley Dodge on there and I riveted this little plate to the ears on this air box this uh, hot air box valve I just uh, used some AN426 3-4 rivets on there, squeezed them on with a hand squiv riveter, hand squeezer. So it's uh, pretty much ready to go on the airplane.